C1, these are cheap guitars, um, probably entry level classical. The, you know, the only entry level classical that's going to appease a, a teacher. Um, these literally are like a hundred and I don't know, 170, 80 dollar guitars, but spruce top, sapelli back and sides, proper um, uh, classical traditional uh, measurements and all that. Not a hybrid. Anyway, I've done a video on this before, so um, not going to do another one. Look, look for Cordoba C1 in, under my videos and you'll find one. Uh, you might have met, remembered a couple of weeks ago, I referenced the fact that I've been enjoying watching um, the 5 Watt World short history videos, which are fantastic. Uh, I really recommend uh, those of you who want to learn about um, traditional uh, and collectible and vintage guitars. Um, watch some of those. I think you can actually buy, I saw an advert on his channel the other day, his name is, is Keith Williams. I saw an advert on his channel where you can actually buy the whole series. And it, man, it's, that's got to be a good deal, what a resource. Or you can watch some of them, I'm not sure if they're all available on his YouTube channel, but I know some of them are. Uh, but one thing that I've also noticed on his channel is he beats the drum for uh, minimalism. Um, in other words, uh, cutting down uh, your uh, level of gear, thinning the herd, uh, getting down to the bare necessities. And of course his tagline, which he uses at the beginning of every uh, video introduction, is get the most music from the least gear. And it's a good tagline. It suits what he's trying to do. It's kind of like uh, uh, the Know Your Gear tagline, which is you know caught on. I see it on T-shirts and stuff like that. And this is a slightly different take on it. And he has at least two videos on his channel where he talks about um, having a large collection of guitars, buying guitars as a habit, being a hoarder, doesn't make you a better musician. Um, doesn't improve your technique and often you over fetishize guitars beyond the tool aspect in other words if you have to have a classical an acoustic and an electric um, you don't need to have five of each or ten of each um, and it's it's an interesting take and I, un I understand stand the concept um, and what he's trying to say uh, because you know as guitarists we do tend to over fetishize the instrument and we do get very material about guitars and even intermediate beginner players I've noticed amass sizable collections um, concentrating more on their collection of gear and the different types of guitars they have uh, over learning how to play one of those guitars so I understand um, what would be the counter argument for that uh, well, um, you could make a case for having, I mean, he talked in his videos about having a single electric guitar. Now, if you're gigging, a good one, you know, a good one and getting rid of all the fluff. If you're gigging, I can see, I could see an argument for having two or three on the stage where you're gigging because, you know, if one pops a string or has another technical issue, then you can grab another one. So that's one argument. If you go down to one guitar and you're a gigging musician, um, you might be in a sticky spot where you have to stop the music, stop your show and change strings in real time, which would be a bit awkward. Uh, I think he does address that in one of the videos and admits that you know having a backup guitar is still within the minimalist aesthetic. Also, I would argue, just from my perspective, I look at the acoustic guitars behind me um, here are the different types. I have dreadnoughts. I could get rid of all but one. Um, that's true. I have a couple of smaller guitars, triple O's or OM's. I could narrow that down to one. 
Uh, my justification for having each is because you get slightly different sounds and they're good for um, slightly different music applications. I also have a baritone acoustic and I use it a lot. It's one of my favorite guitars. Um, so for that deeper tuning, um, you know, I'd like to keep a baritone acoustic. And then I have a seven string Russian guitar for open tuning stuff. So instead of having a traditional guitar for open tuning, I have a um, special Russian um, acoustic. And then I have a couple of parlors. Now, technically I could cut all that down to one or two or three, but it really is nice to have a representative of each group. Now, I'm not at the point where I have 10 of each. You know, I know guys that have 40, 50, 100 guitars uh, in their house or in storage or something. Considering that I fix up hundreds of guitars a year, I think I do a good job to keep my guitars down to about 20, 25 uh, of personal collection. I do sell a lot. When I find something that I like, something has to go to make room for it. So I'm not a hoarder in the complete sense. Um, then I have uh, two or three classicals. Um, one, one's a vintage Martin that's not made on traditional classical principles. That, that is indeed a um, nostalgic uh, guitar made in, in my birth year. But then I have you know a regular classical, a flamenco, uh, an electric classical. And that's what I have in that realm. I could cut that down, but I do use different ones for different applications. I have three hollow bodies. Um, one's a full jazz box with just a single mini humbucker. Uh, one is a 375 copy with two two humbuckers, and the other yeah the other one is also. So I could cut that down probably to two or even one. Uh, so there's places I can see in my collection where I could cut down where I really don't need them all. Um, however, I've cut down a lot already, and it's agonizing to get rid of more. I probably have more electric guitars that I need. Let me count them. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 <laughs> electric guitars. They won't all stay here because I wake up one morning and I'll say, oh, that can go. Um, but I, you know, I have... Uh, I justify keeping more than one or two electric guitars with the fact that I have sort of a, a one that is single coil um, for that kind of strati tone. I have, um, you know, sort of a, a Les Paul humbucker for the more meaty stuff. I have a little practice guitar, uh, a headless, uh, which I mess around on at home a lot. Uh, and then I have, um, you know, one or two super strats um, that have different fretboards and different feels to them, set up slightly differently. And I could probably cut down to four or five or three or four and get rid of the rest. And I probably will at some point. However, um, you know, when I watch videos or I see videos by some of my compatriots in the um, guitar world on, on YouTube, they have more guitars than I do just with the electric guitars than I do with just just on the wall behind them <laughs> you know I can think of two or three vloggers that um, you know shoot videos in you know in a room that, that has probably 15 20 guitars either on the wall or in stands behind them and that may just be a portion or a part of what they have so I, I understand the purest aspect if you get one good electric guitar and get rid of all of your sort of you know experimental purchases that maybe didn't quite work out or maybe just keep a couple and have one if you're a gigging musician as an extra um, to be able to use or even three you know maybe you have a a, an, a hollow body and a, and a solid body you know and then a backup uh, I think I think it's pretty sensible to think that way, and perhaps you pick up those guitars more and you become more proficient on them, rather than having twenty electric guitars, ninety percent of which you hardly ever play. I, I completely understand the aesthetic, and I and I actually um, I'm a little bit jealous of people who do that um, because I, don't, I think there's something cool about trimming down and just becoming minimalist and and having you know, three or four really, really, really top guitars. Uh, and, and um, 
you know, not having uh, all of these budget mid-range guitars that you're constantly trying to make good guitars out of. But at the same time, I am a budget enthusiast. I, this channel is all about discovering, being able to set up and getting guitars for $100, $200, $300 dollars that you can put some time and work into uh, and make guitars that rival the six, seven, eight hundred dollar uh, models. So if you can't afford, you know, even the higher end squires, as I said in my last video, are, are up in the five and six hundreds now. If you can't afford one of those, there are plenty of alternatives uh, that you can put some time into. However, there's so many companies and, and some of them are poor and some of them are decent. And channels like this help people to distinguish between those and we can share our findings. Um, so I'm hesitant to fully embrace the extreme minimalist mode um, just because I find experimentation and ex exploration of alternative brands, new brands, cheaper brands um, to be extremely satisfying. And I, a, lot, a lot of times I think I'm going to keep them and I end up selling them. Um, so it, it doesn't really become a problem with hoarding. For instance, I have bought probably 15 Harley Benton guitars. I have two left. I have probably bought 12 to 15 IYV guitars. I have two left. Uh, I've bought probably five or six Groats, four or five fl Fireflies, a couple of Donners, and I have none of those left. I've, I've moved them all on. Um, so, you know, it's not a case of, you know, my case is slightly different. I'm not always, very often, very seldom am I buying for uh, my personal collection. And very seldom does a guitar come in and I say, oh, I've just got to have that. And it sticks around more than a couple of months. Uh, a lot of times I say to myself, I just got to have that. It sticks around for a few weeks. And then I really realize, you know what? It's a cool guitar, but I don't play it that much. It's very similar to the one I, another one that I have. So I don't need to keep it. And I end up moving it on and it goes to somebody who will play it. Um, so, you know, in some ways, um, I am a mix between the collector slash hoarder and the minimalist approach. In other words, setting a minimum for you to keep. Uh, but I also am a working guitar tech, so it's necessary for me to have quite a few guitars coming into uh, this house. It's part of how I pay my bills. Um, so it's slightly different than somebody who's just buying and buying and buying. And I did run into a guy that has a hundred and something guitars, never sold one uh, a few weeks back. I, he's, he's bought three off me now, four, four off, no, three off me. And he's got something like 110, 20 guitars in his house. Um, I'm not one of those people, but I'm also uh, not at the Keith Williams level yet where I'm willing to say, okay, what's my favorite electric? That's the one I'm keeping. The rest go. What's my favorite acoustic? That's the one I'm keeping. The rest go. Um, so I confess, yeah, I haven't quite reached that level of purity. Uh, and um, I may at some point, I may be forced to at some point because, you know, if you when you move, uh, I just moved here and got rid of tons of stuff. And if I have to move again at some point, I may decide to really trim down and thin down uh, and make choices at that particular time. But it's an interesting question, isn't it? And I'd like to hear from some of you in the comments. What do you think about the minimalist approach? What do you think about selling all of your budget guitars and just getting one good one or two good ones uh, and going with that and not having, you know, dozens of models lying around your house or not buying the latest budget guitar that tempts you online, developing sort of a discipline and just sticking to um, a couple of models and making practicing and playing and bettering your skills your main priority rather than picking up deals and doing mods and, and setups and building up an arsenal. Um, what's your priority in all this? Uh, and the last defense of people that do collect guitars is it's fun. It's fun. I mean, people collect all kinds of weird stuff. And, you know, guitars are as good as anything. They're probably better than a lot of th things. And there are some people that do play them. All the guitars in this room, I pull them out and play them. I strum them. I mean, I, some of them I only may play two, three times a year for five, ten minutes. Um, but they do get played. They don't sit 
you know, forever not getting played. I, I, if you have a guitar you haven't broken out in a year, as Keith Williams suggests in his uh, video, then it probably is wise to move it on. You know, it's better that somebody plays it. Uh, however, um, I can't completely, you know, criticize people who build up a collection because there is an aesthetic pleasure uh, in doing so. And guitars are beautiful things. Um, there are all kinds of reason to have them. I mean, you might want to collect guitars made with exotic wood, so you might want to collect uh, guitars that give you a uniquely different sound if you're doing all your own recording, uh, recording all your own instruments. You might need, say, more than half a dozen to achieve all of the effects and all the sounds uh, that you make. Uh, there are many reasons, but anyway, it's an interesting debate. I did one on guitar hoarding a few weeks back, and I just thought I would do one on this sort of minimalist approach. Uh, you know, just getting rid of everything but bare essentials and concentrating purely on playing and mastering uh, those guitars. Anyway, let me know what you think, and we'll talk next time. See you then.